Let's do this. All right. Good. All right. All right. Cool. All right. Thank you, everybody, for your patience. We were trying to get live and dealing with technical issues, and we should be live now on our Facebook page. That's Global Trading Army. If you're looking for us on Facebook, it's hashtag Global Trading Army. Um, so let's 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 talk about what's going on. What what are what are we talking about today? We're talking about forex. We are talking about the largest market in the world. What does that mean? That means that it there's so much currency that moves through the market that we look at during London session alone, at least a trillion dollars circulates through the Forex market. So it's bigger than the US stock market, New York Stock Exchange, bigger than what um, you can imagine. And there's opportunities to make money all the time. There are different types of ways to trade. And I, I just put that in the thing. We're going to talk about the different types of way to ways of trading, which is scalping and swinging. And then there's a third one that I don't have listed here that I'm going to talk a little bit about today, which is position trading. So in two ways to trade, there's scalping and swinging, okay? There is a third way to trade, which is a position trade, where you take a position early on in the year, expecting a currency to close out at a certain price at the end of the year. Now, that is probably great for something like indices or trading Euro USD, or something that has totally bottomed out and has a long way to climb. Some people will do that. Some people will take uh, really long um, scalp trades. I'm sorry, not scalp trades, uh, but position trades that um, might be three months before you see or you realize your profit before your take profit closes. Usually people with large accounts do that. Most people who get into trading and go to one of these companies that tell you, hey, we're going to teach you how to trade. We'll show you how to make, you know, 5% a day on your account, blah, 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 blah. Most of those people are teaching you how to do something called scalping. Now, right here on my screen, I said it's taking a trade, grabbing profits, five to 15 pips per trade. Let me take that to another level. Sometimes 30 pips per trade. We have in our trading um, team here at Global Trading Army, we try to look for trades that are going to get people 30 pips. We usually look for those to happen within eight to 12 hours from us calling that trade. And the reason why is because you can get bored trading because a lot of the big moves take days to, to actually take place, right? And then they're swinging, like we just talked about, those trades that take days to take place. Now, let me tell you, swing trades are fun. They are exciting. They are boring. <laughs> and the reason why is because you know that you're going to take profit, but the exciting part is really watching the watching that price go down when you're expecting it to go up or watching that price go up when you're expecting it to go down and it's day one and then it's day two and it's like, is this the day? And then there's some moments where like news hits or something happens during London session or New York session where all of a sudden, boom, you're taking profit and you're like, wow, it happened. I'm going to give you an example of that today, right? We said on our Money Moves Sunday, this past Sunday, that the U30, which had already peaked at 30,000, was going to hit 29.5 before the end of the week. 29.483 is what the market closed at, according to Market Watch, today. In other words, that happened over time. It didn't happen immediately. As a matter of fact, on Monday, we watched it go up higher. And I was thinking to myself, dear God, if I had $100,000, I could put a 0.10 lot size on this move and I could wait and then I would come out of this thing $5,000 richer <laughs> because I'd be able to stand the move, stomach the move, right? As it was popped back to 30,000, then it came down to 29.6 and it popped back up 29.9 and it came back to 29.8. Then it came down to 29.7, popped back up. And then finally, it hit. And what I just explained right there is swinging. It's that you're, you're in it. It moves up a little bit. It moves down a little bit. It moves up a little bit down. It moves up, down a little bit. It moves up and then it moves all the way down to your take profit on the downside or the other way around. Down, then it up, then down, then up, then down, then up, then down, then up, all the way up to your take profit. Sometimes swing take, trades can take 50 to 75 pips. If you're looking at a currency like Euro USD, OMG, a swing trade on Euro USD can be 100 pips. 100 pips. Now think about this with a 0 0.10 lot size, 100 pips is going to net you about 100 bucks. Now, if you're using um, 
a bigger lot size or something like that, that's, that makes it even, even more, depending on the size of your, the size of your investment, how much money you're putting into your trading account. Okay. So when we talk about swing trading, a lot of times that is where a lot of people get lost. They're like, eh, I don't want to trade. It's not as exciting as they put it on those advertisements that I see. It's not a lot of fun. But even with a swing trade, on average, you could be putting at least one to 3% into your account per trading day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. When we say per day, we're talking about actual banking days. Now, <clears throat> let's take a quick look at what I was just talking about with the US 30, because you, those of you who know us, you know we trade um, indices as well as our dear friend gold and currencies. So if you are here, boo, 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 rare formation in the S&P 500, woo, okay, anyway. Um, actually, you can almost see it right here. I could show you right here, here we go. This was our last little move on gold and gold was also a swing. Um, even though this is the one hour chart, this was just a couple of days ago when we were saying the price was gonna hit 1900, which it did. And then it took three days for it to come down to the price level that we thought was going to be next, which was 1870. And that was based off of what we saw back here where there was a double bottom back here on November 12th. So we're right in that zone. It's supposed to come down a little bit more, by the way, for anybody else who's out there trading it. But let's go back to the daily chart. Let's look at the US 30, okay? US 30 is a number for Dow Jones Industrial Average 30, the DJIA. This is the thing that you see on the news all the time. It is a count of the top 30 stocks. Top 30 stocks, as, as described by Dow Jones Industrial, they choose which stocks go on there every year. There's an opportunity for some stocks to fall off. This year, two stocks fell off, two stocks came on. One of the stocks that came off this year was Pfizer, which happens to be one of the co companies that is out there making a vaccine for COVID-19. Just thought I'd throw that out there because that's a very interesting piece of news, a interesting piece of information that I read in a newspaper. Well, a news article called, uh, I subscribe to Morning Brew. They're apolitical and they just give the facts and they do it in a funny way and that's why I like it. Um, <clears throat> but as you can see here, this is what we called the other day. We looked at the candles, we looked at the formations, we said, hey, there's going to be a double, there's, there's, there appears to be a rise to a previous level or previous high. This 30,000 level is where the Dow Jones Industrial Average hit in early, uh, well, actually around this time last year, right? Um, just around this time of year, it hit right, right here at 30,000 and then it popped up to 30,100 as you can see right there. When we were looking at this on Sunday, we talked about where the price was and we talked about, hey, it, it's right at that point where all the market officials said earlier in 2017, 2019, that this particular, this particular index could not sustain a price of 30,000, that it wouldn't go any higher. We looked at that, that was sentimental analysis. Then we looked at our technical analysis and we said, it's going to drop and it did. It dropped, but we said that on Sunday. And you know what happened on Monday morning? It came up some more. <laughs> so over time, we knew that, hey, this is going to happen. And then what happened on Tuesday? It started to drop. Here we are on Wednesday. It dropped in even more. And Thursday's candle is already beginning because we are trading Forex. And when, and the, and when we trade Forex and indices, a lot of these are still traded after hours. That's one of the cool things about being part of those market moves is if you have a good broker, like some of us do, like for FX Choice and a couple of others, um, uh, after hours, when you're on some of these, um, on some of these brokers, um, you can actually still trade the, the indices or gold for that matter. Let's look at Euro USD. Well, let's see what it did. All right, I'm gonna show you another opportunity where you could say there was a swing trade. Now, there was a time when we said that um, it was going to go down to uh, 1600, right? Well, if you had gotten in on that trade, you would have been waiting right here. If you gotten in here, 
on October 8th, you would have had to wait all the way until October 29th before that move occurred. All we were looking at as was support and resistance on the daily time frame, and that that's really a good clue. Where am I trading that on? Am I trading this on my daily chart? Am I trading this on my four hour chart? Am I doing this on my one hour chart? A lot of people like to do what is called intraday trading. Intraday means that I'm trading intra in the day, <laughs> maybe over a day or two, but not an entire week or two weeks. So one of the best ways to know that is to use the daily to get your sentimental and your technical analysis. What is the overall trend? What's happening with this currency pair? What's happening with this indices? And then looking for entries on smaller time frames that put you in the direction of that trend. Right now, the Dow Jones Industrial Average is trending in a downward movement. I would want to, if I wanted to scalp it, I would look at my um, smaller charts like this 15 minute chart or a five minute chart and look for an opportunity for sell. Right now, there is no opportunity for sell. I would wait for this to retrace some and then I would take a sell when it maybe it probably popped over this. Uh, oh, I'm looking at U30, um, Euro USD. Maybe if it pops over 18430, um, I might, or 18,450, I might take a sell from this, this point on. And that would help me to get back on that move as I am expecting for Euro USD to come all the way back down. Right now it's super high in a place where it's kind of like above, well, it just cracked beyond a resistance level and is dropping back down um, to support. So I could go in on a smaller time frame and pick up 10 or 15 pips and be really, really happy with that move. That is one way that I have an opportunity to trade. Look at that. This is the one hour time frame. By the way, these support and resistance lines I drew up months ago and they're still the same. They haven't changed. The market itself repeats. It just repeats at different times. Sometimes it moves and you get that sell happening in the afternoon um, after lunch during New York session. Sometimes it happens in the mornings during London session or in the afternoons during London session. It all depends on what's really going on. One of the key things about Forex trading that we all know is that on London session, that's when the banks of the world get together and they make sure that they close up all their transactions. So we talk about this in our intro to Forex when I go through the history and, and what is Forex. When we know this, and this happens during London session, there is a lot of volatility during London session. You hear me talk about that when I talk about the different trading sessions. When you're looking at a pair like Euro USD, you may see a sell happen during London session and then a sudden buy happen during New York session. And that is one of the key things and why I like to have people look at these one hour charts because they help us to see what happens. Now, if you're looking at my chart right now, I am just looking at the one hour chart and I'm looking at the price over an eight hour moving average. What do I mean by eight hour moving average? I've put a moving average of eight and I'm on the one hour time frame. It's a simple moving average. And all I'm looking for is what's happened over the last couple of days because there's eight hours in a day, but there's three trading sessions that are all at just about eight hours a piece because they're banking hours. So I can see what changes through each session. Obviously, during London session, prices were going up over the last couple of days. Boom, 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 boom. But today, during New York session, price dropped. And that is why we see price going down and, and hitting a different level, possibly going down to 118.60. Now, what I just talked about right there is a possible trade entry. Some people would call this a market execution entry. And if I were a, um, if I were entering into a trade like that, I would simply pull up my chart and do a simple um, ad of putting myself on that trade. Let me show you how. Now I'm currently trading on MetaTrader 4 on my computer. I am going to pull up Euro USD. That is the, the currency that I want to trade. As a matter of fact, you know what? Let's look at that on a chart really quickly before we actually pull that, we, we create that trade. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Doo -doo -doo -doo. All right. So like I mentioned before, EURUSD is, is attempting on, at least on the 15 minute time frame, and it, it appears that it may want to 
um, retrace a little bit. So what I may want to do is do my entry probably somewhere up here. Um, so I might want to put in a market execution order. And of course, if I'm using a small trading account, like we always tell you, you want to exercise proper risk management, don't go in there trading one zero lot size. As a matter of fact, this is a demo account that I'm trading on right now. And if you are using a demo account, Use a demo account and create a demo account that is going to be more relative to the size of the account that you're going to actually trade. Unless you have a million dollars, when you go and log on to MetaTrader for the four for the first time and it offers you a one million dollar demo account, don't trade a one million dollar demo account. It's going to be very boring using 0 0.0 lot sizes on a million dollar account. If you have a million dollars to trade with, give me a call. Okay, just kidding. <laughs> But seriously, if you're trading with a larger account, yes, you can play with larger lot sizes. I personally like to remind people that you should only trade what you're willing to lose. You need to know what your risk appetite is. If it's 3%, then it's 3% per trade, not per day, not any of that. You need to make sure one trade, one risk per trade. So when you're looking at this, you'll want to do a simple movement like this. Now, right now, Euro USD, this current candle on the 15 minute chart is in a buy, but I know that I can expect for it to sell off. So if I go in here and I just do a simple sell by market, and all I have to do is just put up my trade right here. It's gonna show me some funky things that are happening right here. I'm gonna double tap here. And what I'm gonna be doing is looking for my take profit and my stop loss. I believe that my take profit, this is actually giving me a pretty good take profit over of 100 pips, 1.7381, which is a good swing trade if you want to do that. I'm just looking for maybe about 20 pips here. So I'm going to go from right here. Actually, I'm going to use this as my calculator right there. 200 pips from where I'm at. Let's go ahead and make it 225 because the price just came up. 250. I'm going to set that, drop it. And then I'm going to put in my stop loss. My stop loss I really want to use is something that is going to be very relevant to what I'm using right now. This stop loss is really over overcompensating. So I'm just going to put 250 points because I want to do a one-to-one -one win loss ratio. And then I'm going to modify my order and there I am. I have my trade put in, I have my take profit and my stop loss put on there. This is one of the reasons why trading from a computer is so much more so much easier than using your phone. Your phone, the MetaTrader 4 that was designed for the cell phone was originally designed so that traders could monitor trades while they were at lunch because traders those guys that you see on Wall Street and the girls that you see on Wall Street yelling at the computers and at each other they don't take lunch breaks um so <laughs> they had to get some get them something so that they could you know follow with uh, labor laws anyway um metatrader 4 on your phone is a good way to enter a trade great way to monitor a trade but one of the best things that's about metatrader 4 when you're using it on the computer you have so many other things that you can put in because if i wanted to I could go back in here and say, you know what? I'm gonna make my stop loss. I'm gonna make my take profit 500 pips, right? That's cool. I it it's gonna hit 1,000 1.17890 at one point. But then I could also put a trailing stop on this thing. This is pointing counting as points instead of pips for all of you traders out there. Probably looking and going, what's a point? A point is basically a pipette. So I'm going to set that here and now i have a trailing stop set on my account so that when i hit 15 pips in profit the 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 trade will continue to look for the next 15 pips and then the next 15 pips and then the next 15 pips and if i hit 15 pips and it goes to 25 pips but it doesn't hit the next 15 it'll save me uh, the 15 pips that I had and keep me from going into the negative when I'm waiting for a trade. Let's just say something swings up really heavy back up to 118, six, uh, the 118, 620, um, which is where my stop loss is. Um, when 118, uh, yeah, 186, 620, which is where my stop loss has been put. Well, this is gonna keep me from having that um, take me out. So that's a really cool, option to have there, especially if you can have your trailing stop to be set in whenever you go into profit. So that is a little bit about MetaTrader 4, a little bit about swing trading, a little bit about scalping. This, what I just put in was a scalp trade. It could also be a swing trade. Really, your, your swinging is going to be when you see a trade, usually when you're, you're looking at it, you're, you're doing your chart markup on a daily time frame. 
and you're looking at daily levels. When you're looking at your one hour or four hour levels, you're looking at a possible you know, swing trade, intraday trades on the one hour chart. But then on, that, on those 15 minute charts, the 30 minute charts, those are scalps. Now, if you wanna learn how we trade on the 30 minute chart with the Global Trading Army, you wanna learn a, bit, a little bit about our moving average strategies, by all means, join us on our Telegram group. We are here for you. By the way, if you have Telegram, I bet you didn't know you could do this. You can just go to this web.telegram.org and you can see it right on your computer. It's another cool, cool tool because with Global Trading Army, we also help people out by helping them to see trades. We call trade ideas and we help people to find a trade that they can get into. We keep those going all the time. We just called a couple on gold and oil that I think are going to be fire. We've got one on the Dow Jones Industrial Average, like I was talking about earlier, the U30, fire, 250 pips, oh, 250 pips profit. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, it has been great having you today. Next week, we'll talk a little bit more about trading on your computer, trading on your phone. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, as a matter of fact, I'm sorry. Next week, we will probably not be meeting because it is Thanksgiving Eve. So we will see you on Money Move Sunday. We'll talk briefly about what we expect with the market. And um, then after that, we'll see you the Sunday after that because we'll be moving right into December. And that's when we see the market slow down a little bit. But I have a feeling that this market is going to be a little bit more of a shakeup. So looking forward to seeing you then. God bless you. Have a great night. Goodbye.